Welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. So welcome, Karen Mason. First of all, I want to welcome you to We Choose to Thrive. And I want to have you take the time to introduce yourself, where you're from. Give us a little bit of a background of kind of the, the things that happened in your life that really colored your world. And then we'll go into what you've done to, to be well, begin to thrive in your world. My first recollection um, was when I was just a, a wee one. Like I, I think I was four years old, but I remember it vividly. And um, my, my parents' friend's neighbor uh, was babysitting us. They used to do that back in those days. You know, They were in the military and were in a remote radar station. And these people were neighbors, so they would just trade off and look after each other's kids. And I remember Mr. M. <laughs> um, ex he, he exposed himself to me in the bathroom and I was taken aback and I remember the, and I remember later that night he was just like let's play doctor and I said what's that and he says well mm -hmm. I'm sick and, you, and you're a nurse and you have to make me feel better you're a doctor and you have to make me feel better and I'm like yeah I don't want to play that game and then later on, another day, there, there was this thing called a canteen. Like, it was like a small little grocery store laundromat thing. And I was in there, and he came in, and he exposed himself to me again. And I remember my mom, um, I was in the, in those days, like we were just little kids, so all the kids would get thrown in the bath. And I'm looking at my brother, and I said to my mom, Mr. McLaughlin has one just like that, but it's way bigger. And my mom was just, yeah, my mom was just like, oh. she went to the base, she, she went to his wife and she just said, if he ever comes near my kids again, I'm going to, I'm going to tell the base commander. So that was my first one. And I don't, I don't ever remember being traumatized by it, but I just, that's my first memory as being a little child, that happening. Then when I was 10, my mom sent me, my mom and dad sent me to stay with my uncle and his, and his wife and my uncle. He, he um, sat my brother and I down when we got there, and he pulled out all these porn magazines and said that he was going to teach us about biology. And he would have Jamie and I sit there and go through these porn magazines, and we weren't allowed to wear underwear to bed, and I remember waking up, and I, I just knew that something had happened. So there was that, and he, I remember him wanting to rub um, lotion, and it was the summertime, he, and at 10 years old, he wanted to rub lotion on my chest and insisted on it, which of course wasn't appropriate, my naked chest. You know, I, I don't feel those things marked me too badly. I think the first, the first time that I was truly assaulted, where I, where I was conscious that I was being assaulted, was really traumatic, and I, I wore that one for 20 years. I was working in a... Um, in a, for a credit union or a bank. Uh, do you have credit unions in the States? Mm -hmm. So I was working for a credit union in this private office. It was a remote private office, and there was a whole team of admin people like myself and then the, the managers. I wasn't popular in this work environment. The women, the women didn't care for me at all. Um, they were actually very mean to me. They bullied me, and I was very much excluded um, from any other social. Like, they'd go out for lunch every day. I was not invited. So I was always left behind alone in the office. And one manager picked up on this. He befriended me. So I thought he was the one person who was going to be really nice to me. Oftentimes, and, I, and in those days, I was riding my bike to work a lot because was, I, it was, I, I was so poor that I couldn't afford the bus. So I, I rode my bike to work. And sometimes the weather was really, really bad. And he would offer to give me a ride home and stuff like that. He was just so, so nice to me. And, then we had our Christmas party, and I hung out with, with, with Jim at this Christmas party. And he asked me at this Christmas party, would you like to share a cab ride home? And I'm like, sure, that would be great. So we leave, we leave the Christmas party. And to this point, I think it's all good. We leave the Christmas party. We're, we're heading back to, to, to drop me off. And he says, hey, are you hungry? Do you want to stop by A&W and grab a burger? And I'm just like, sure, that'd be great. So, we, so we're in a cab. 
we pull into the NW. In those in those days, you 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 parked and they brought the food out to the car, car kind of thing. So we've got our burgers. We're in the back of the car, and he and he starts to molest me, and I started screaming to stop. And he got very aggressive, and I was screaming, "I'm please stop, please stop!" And the cab driver did nothing. He let Jim assault me. Maybe culturally for this cab driver, this was the norm. I don't know. But I got assaulted by Jim, and I screamed, and I screamed, and I finally got him to stop in time, and I got taken home. I was, I was just floored by it. I, I didn't understand it. I, I didn't understand what I had done. To, 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 he had a pregnant wife at home to boot. So I didn't know what I had done to create, like I didn't think I was, because the girls always accused me of flirting in their office. So I thought, I didn't think I flirted with him. I was very friendly, but I didn't think I was flirting with him. So fair enough. And, and so time goes by and um, the girls again, you know, shortly thereafter, they, they go out for lunch. They leave me behind in the office as usual. And Jim come, Jim's hanging back in the office. And he shoves me into a corner and he assaults me again. He's got his tongue down my throat and he's attacking me and I screamed and I got him off of me again and I went into the bathroom and I'm in the bathroom and I'm bawling my eyes out and I don't understand what's going on. And one of the girls came back from lunch. She sees me in the bathroom bawling my eyes out and she says, what's going on? And I, I told her, I said, Jim just assaulted me. This is what just happened. And she goes, well, you deserved it. And I bought it. I went, and I, to me, that is the hardest part of this whole story was that the women thought I deserved it. The next day I was fired from the job. And I mean, in those days, jobs were, were scarce. So, I, so not only was I accosted in the office, I was also fired. But because it was my fault, I never did anything, I never said anything, and it was the managers who fired me, it was the manager who assaulted me, so I didn't feel I had anything to say. And this was, this was like 30, 30 years ago, this was in 1980, 1985. So that rocked my world. I was now unemployed, I had no job, I had no money, I was broke, I was assaulted, it was my fault, it was shaming, I was full of guilt, I didn't understand. Following that assault, I had a couple of date rapes. I earned those ones as well. And to pack around that guilt for so long was, was incredibly, incredibly painful. I'm sure it was. And then, of course, my self-esteem is in the toilet. Where are you now with, with all of this? Because we have a good picture of what happened, and this is typically what happens to many of us. Mm -hmm. it, it's unfortunately a story of, of many women. So. Your self-esteem is not good. You're feeling like it's all your fault, and you're questioning why, why all this. So where are you now? Where are you now on your path of living life and thriving and, and feeling good about you? What happened after that was I got into a marriage, and it was very, very abusive. It was physically abusive, sexually abusive, extremely verbally abusive. And I had a child in that marriage, and when my husband turned on my child, that's when I kind of went, okay, enough, I can't, I have to break this pattern, break this chain. And so where my recovery started was after I left my husband, I got help. I, I saw a counselor, and she, she told me how strong I was for getting out of that environment. And for some reason, I bought it. I bought it that I was strong. It was the first time in my life. This was in 1992. It was the very first time in my life I actually believed I was a strong human being because up until that point, up until that woman told me that, I thought I was one of the weakest human beings. I thought I was lower than pawns, no self-confidence, wasn't worthy of anything, wasn't worthy of love, wasn't worthy of anything at all. So today, I mean, I've done a lot of work. I, I you know, I went to Apocalypse, as you and I are very much aware. But beyond that, I, I've taken something in Canada that's called the Pursuit of Excellence, about accountability and about it somewhat to do with law of attraction, but not really. There was just a, a, a ton of self-work. So today, I am confident today. I feel really good about myself. I feel good about how I look. 
I love my profession. I love my husband. I love my family. I've got two amazing kids, the one from my first marriage, and my, my youngest is, is 13. I have learned that I'm, I'm, I'm worthy of respect. And that is really, really important to me, that, that people that are in my inner circle, people around me respect me. And I, I, I've achieved that. I've got a thriving business. I've got, I've, I've got it all. I've got, I'm just so full of abundance in my life now that if what I would like to share with women is I've been through my own personal hell with, with different levels of abuse. And if I can help anybody, give some woman or, some, or even a man, if, if somebody's in an abusive relationship, you can get out of it and you can survive. Because when I left my husband, I had a newborn babe on my hip. I had no money. I had no job. I had to fly, flee across the country. He was stalking me like it was bad. But I survived. And I rebuilt. And you can. You don't have to stay. You, don't, you do have a choice to get out. It's hard. When I left my husband, I lost my friends. They all turned on me. So they weren't really friends. They didn't, you know, maybe they were in similar situations. I have no idea. He was an airline pilot, and so we all had it, you know, we all had that very connected group of people. So when I left him, they, they were done with me. And they, I don't know that they believe my story. So I had to do a complete rebuild. And I, I took it on. I'm not thankful that these things happened to me, but I am who I am because of where I've been. And would I, you say we have a choice? Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm really proud of myself that because I came from a background where there wasn't a lot of encouragement or, or, or pumping me up. I remember the, the first person, my very good friends, who really truly believed in me and helped lift me up. After I left my husband, like I, I met new friends, and they were, these people believed in me and lifted me up and cherished me and cherished me for who I was. And that was really helpful. My journey was to have women behind me who truly believed in me. And I think that that was a, that was a really, really big help. So your words, um, as we conclude our interview, your words to somebody just starting down this journey of real, recognizing within themselves that this is not the life that they want. And maybe they've made the break, but they're still feeling that overwhelming cloud of sadness the self-destructive tendencies that those of us have gone through abusive situations tend to have, whether it's the depression or alcohol or drug abuse or any number of other kinds of things, what would you say to somebody that's recognizing that I need to make some changes? Well, the first thing I would say is don't believe what they're telling you because as a survivor, everything that was said to me and all those abuse situations is I was believing the negative words they were telling me about myself. So don't believe that. That's about them. It has nothing to do with you. It's their way of holding you down, of holding you in that spot of being vulnerable to them and, and holding you down so hard that you feel you have no choice but to take that abuse. Don't believe what they say. Don't. Know who you are. Know that you're good. Know that you're beautiful and that it will get better and that you can get out and find the right support. Find the right support. Um, and the right support doesn't necessarily mean get out of that relationship. The right support means somebody that it could mean that, but it, it, could, also, it, it could also just mean surround yourself with people who believe in you and are giving you support and can encourage you. They can, they can hold you when you need to cry. They can kick your ass when you are buying your own excuses, you know, this, I got a lot. <laughs> we all do. And there's always trigger points that, that, you know, something happens, we'll be going along just fine, something comes right in our face, and we go, yeah. boom, you know. I know. It's recognizing those trigger points and how to, to rise above them yeah. and not stay in that place. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's just, it's very difficult. It's, it's not easy to get out of an abusive relationship. It isn't, but you really need to have people around you that believe in you and support you in a positive way. Um, but you can get out. Like, that's, that's the thing. I, I had no money. I had no job. I had, a, I had a newborn babe on my hip. Mm -hmm. 
it would, you know, and I and my husband had a really good paying job. We had a house. We had two cars. We had it all. I left it all and, and found myself in a Haven house. What strength? It's there for us. It's there so we can get out and find the strength to get out. And I completely rebuilt. I, I, I own, you know what, I, I bought another home, well, a couple of homes since then. I have a new husband who loves and adores me. I've got two beautiful children who respect me. And they would, they know to respect women. Because that's how I've raised my voice, you know. And uh, I'm respected in my community. I'm respected in my business. I'm respected with my friends. And it, it, it's a choice of who we choose to, to surround ourselves with. Yeah. You know, it's if I have somebody in my life who, who, who sucks the life out of me or doesn't support me, and I'm not a needy person at all, but if, I, if there's somebody in my life who, who, where, where, where they're more of a detriment, I don't have them in my life anymore. I surround myself with people who are, who are on my team. Well, I'll you. And I'll hold you, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. What a beautiful interview. Thank you so much, Karen. You're so awesome. And to see the resilience and the and the drive to, to be all we can be, to be a force for change, and the willingness to make that choice of I've got to make the changes because this is not where I want to live my life yeah. is, is remarkable. And your story will have impact on other people's lives and I thank you for having the love in your heart to share. This story was brought to you by The Woman I Love at www.thewomanilove.com If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive. And as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, growing strong and uniting, can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world. We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal, but the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself, for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this We Choose to Thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www.thewomanilove.com. Also check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.